So today our discussion is about social determinants of health. So think for just a second, if you uh, remember the earthquake in Haiti, do you remember the magnitude of the earthquake in Haiti? How many people died in the Haiti earthquake? Now remember, after the earthquake in Haiti, there was an earthquake in Chile. Do you remember the magnitude of the earthquake in Chile? How many people died in the Chile earthquake? So the earthquake in Haiti was a uh, magnitude of about 5.9. Um, well, depending on reports, 5.9 to 6.8. Um, and approximately 250,000 people died. The earthquake in Chile was 8.8, .8, and uh, the correct answer isn't on here. It's actually less than 1,000 people perished in the earthquake in Chile. So I really love this question posed by CNN. Why was Haiti's earthquake toll, uh, earthquake toll higher than Chile's? And uh, probably some of the reasons that you would come up with is related to infrastructure, building supplies, quality of homes, quality of buildings. Um, and, and all things related to income or, or wealth, country wealth, and, 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 and perhaps even individual wealth. So in this introduction to social determinants of health, um, and, and you've read the uh, article by Marmot and the Solid Facts Report, and in that, um, the, the gist of it is that poor people have shorter life expectancy and they suffer more illness. Um, some really interesting um, data presented in the Solid Facts report are mentioned by Marmot is that um, for every 1.5 miles you travel by a subway from downtown Washington, D.C. into the outlying areas, your life expectancy increases by approximately one year. And so you might say, well, how is that possible? Um, and in fact, um, uh, similar phenomena exist here in Utah. So um, for the zip code in the area immediately surrounding uh, BYU, life expectancy is, um, if, if this were a country, would be um, ranked very close to the highest life expectancy in the world, probably a, a, around second. Um, and if you travel uh, just a couple of miles south to South Provo, life expectancy drops um, dramatically by, by several years. Um, the same happens in the Salt Lake Valley in the area surrounding um, Holiday. Um, life expectancy is approximately seven years higher than it is just down the road in South Salt Lake. And so you say, how is that possible? Well, probably related to demographics, income, quality of life, and all of the things that are afforded by income. Um, while medicine can improve longevity and prognosis after major illness, probably more important for the health of our population as a whole are the social and economic conditions that make people sick. And that's what Marmot's going to say um, several times. He'll talk about um, the, the, the causes of the causes. And um, it's also really important to bring up that as we talk about comparisons between um, countries' health status, um, it's important to note that there has been a debate about genes versus environments. So uh, what this means is a lot of people attribute the health of, um, for example, uh, ja the Japanese in Japan or um, uh, Northern Europeans long life expectancy. A lot of people would attribute that to some sort of genetic um, um, adaptation or, or, or improvement. Um, when in reality, um, it, it, it is not um, possible to attribute that to genes um, scientifically. Um, the, the life expectancy has increased so dramatically in the recent decades that uh, we, we just believe this is too short for genetic selection to be accounting for that. And so it's probably mostly related to environmental features um, or conditions that would fit under the, uh, the purview or the domain of social determinants of health. And uh, these are some of the things that we're going to talk about um, during this discussion, and that is that the poor health of the poor is caused by unequal distribution of goods, power, income, and services, access to health care, schools, and education, conditions of work and leisure, um, quality of homes, quality of communities and towns, 
and um, opportunities to lead a flourishing and productive life, be a contributor, a full contributor to society, and uh, being able to earn an adequate income, for example, in, in a job that allows you some mobility and some control, some autonomy. And so Michael Marmot, Sir Michael Marmot, um, has posed this question many times, and he says, what good does it do to treat people's illnesses and then send them back to the conditions that made them sick? And of course, um, our healthcare approach in um, many circumstances is, let's treat the acute condition. Uh, and then we oftentimes, uh, because we are not in a position to do otherwise, uh, once people are stable enough to go home, they go home and are oftentimes in most cases, return to the situation that probably contributed to their acute illness in the first place. So why do we care about the social determinants of health? Well, the social determinants of health have a direct impact on our health. So uh, again, to use the term, uh, they are the causes of the causes. So we're really looking at the root of illness. Um, and, and that the uh, social determinants structure other causes of health. Um, so, for example, um, environment. If you look at someone's environment, let's say in a home setting, and their exposure to mold or asbestos. Um, at, at one point in California, I, I uh, uh, discussed um, on a number of occasions um, asbestos exposure in, in apartments and what we determined um, was that people living in low-income housing were being exposed to asbestos. And so uh, you might um, say, and, and perhaps uh, if you were aware that you were being exposed to asbestos, you would probably move to another apartment. And you might have that financial freedom or that ability or the mobility. Now, if you don't have the finances or the wherewithal or the ability to do that, given that you might be low-income, um, for any number of reasons, we're not we're not pointing fingers at why someone is uh, would would be classified as low income. Um, then you don't have that ability to move, so that you can discontinue the exposure to asbestos or to mold. Uh, one of the other examples that I think is 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 very pertinent is um, when we talk about behaviors. Um, and so we, we, we say, for example, um, it, is, it, is it theft or is it larceny? Yes, but is it necessary? Meaning that was this, con was this person living under circumstances where he had no opportunity or option to earn um, an income that's sufficient enough to support his, his life or even the basic um, elements of life um, like food? And so um, he might have committed a crime, but was under dire circumstances. And so um, the social determinants of health would really look at those underlying conditions, meaning that he has no job skills and no ability to earn an income to support his life and, 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 and purchase food for himself, herself, or, or their family. Um, and, and then we look at um, services. Um, the... Uh, in this case, uh, medical or delivery services that might be available in communities. And so um, I, I once came in contact with um, a family in Guatemala, and the father said to me that the son was, was dying, um, and they were all very sad. And, and, and indeed, the son did look very sick and was coughing a lot. And uh, he, the father said that um, he had asthma, and in their uh, small um, rural a coastal town, uh, they did not have access to the medications and couldn't afford to travel to um, a larger city to purchase them. And so um, uh, this is particularly sad to me because I have um, three of my four children uh, have asthma. And so I think um, um, such a, um, what, what can be a, you know, a um, very difficult condition certainly should not be life-threatening and shouldn't impact their quality of life um, and certainly not be a life-threatening condition. Nevertheless, services that are available in that community might, um, again, related to not individual wealth necessarily, although it's not independent of that, but um, at a larger level related to a national wealth or community wealth. So again, we're looking at the causes of the causes. 
Now, the top 10 social determinants of health, as Sir Michael Marmot and, and the um, World Health Organization's Commission on Social Determinants of Health have identified, are the social gradient. And you'll see elements of the social gradient throughout all of the remaining 10 determinants. Um, and, and, and that will become very evident as we discuss all of them. That, again, the social gradient is a standalone determinant, but very um, elements of it appear throughout the, uh, the remainder. Stress, early life, social exclusion, work, unemployment, social support, addiction, food, and transportation. Now, some of these will be um, micro-level, meaning that they may be more um, manifest on the individual level, things such as stress, while others are going to be more related to community-level or service-level things, um, such as transportation and infrastructure in communities. So the uh, social gradient refers to uh, the concept that life expectancy is shorter and most diseases are more common as you move down the social class ladder. Indeed, almost twice the risk of death and illness. And uh, I'll present some data to you in just a moment to support that. Um, disadvantages may include fewer family assets, poor education during adolescence, insecure unemployment, um, hazardous or dead-end jobs. And you think about individuals you might know who have been exposed to work-related um, accidents. And they tend to not be uh, desk jobs or, or um, you know, kind of white-collar jobs or professions, um, but things such as construction or being exposed to hazardous chemicals or loud noises. Um, and those would be people who, in most cases, would be lower on the socioeconomic ladder. Poor housing, raising a family in difficult circumstances. Um, so having... Um, um, uh, single parent homes, um, which may be the result of um, financial stress. So the father had to leave the home um, either because there were domestic um, disaccord or perhaps even financial reasons. So the father had to go work somewhere else. And so raising a family under difficult circumstances, under financial duress, um, which might lead to um, poor education. Um, during adolescence, so not having the same educational opportunities. So, and, and you might say, well, everybody can go to school and everybody can work hard. Um, but really think about it objectively. Is that really the case? Um, so you have a family that can afford to live in um, suitable conditions 